So we are in Gallery 211 and in front of Horace Pippin's Christmas Morning Breakfast. TT just released a heavy sigh. <laughs> <laughs> a telling heavy sigh, which makes me think he's maybe dreading this one. I don't know. I've been thinking about this one the most because I, I believe you mentioned this when, when, we, when we first introduced the idea of me coming in. The probably only piece we have in the museum that has Christmas in the title. Yes. So that's probably like it is the most direct uh, Christmas painting we have. So just to describe the painting, um, we have this Christmas tree off to the one side, this boy sitting at a table. His mother is bringing him like a stack of pancakes. The house is sparsely decorated and you get the impression that like there's cracks in the walls and you can see boards and things through the wall. So you're kind of under the impression that this is, you know, not a wealthy family and The artist is a self-taught artist, too, so there is no sort of realistic perspective in the painting. Like, the floorboards are straight up and down. The walls um, generally kind of just... Everything is very, like, flat against the wall. So it it all has a sort of childlike look about it as well. You know, that's true. Everything that you said, but I'm also intrigued by the idea that in Horace Pippin's work, there is something very realistic in the simplicity of what he's hmm. rendering. He's, he's, he's giving you exactly what he sees right. of this, of this scene. Yeah. And it's very specific too. Like, yeah. you know, there's just all these like lots of details, even the ornaments on the tree feel like very, very specific of right. you know, different things. Like it looks like popcorn balls maybe and uh, popcorn garland. And there's an orange under the tree, which is like, Always this thing people get in for Christmas in like old movies. <laughs> right. Right. Which is funny though, because, and again, I know the, again, the premise of what we're doing here mm-hmm. is trying to come up with a film yeah. for this. But the funny thing for me is I don't, and I don't know if it's, it's Pippin's work itself or mm-hmm. what, but I don't feel, I don't feel a movie coming off of this. That's the, that's the, maybe mm. that was why I sighed when I first okay. got here. Cause it's, it's kind of like, too- wow, there's, it, it is so, it is so flat. It doesn't spring to life in that way. I think you could totally make a movie though of this. It's, it seems like a person's memory of their childhood. And, and it's like, it, it is also going to dance into that like deeply sentimental territory. Sure. Right. Definitely. Of like, we didn't have much, but we had each other. Like that yeah. kind of story. There is something homey and, and rosy about the memory of what you're, you're getting here and what you're seeing. Yeah. There is something that I'm like, oh, I don't want to make a movie that's just like this sort of glorification of like, isn't it great to be poor? All right. I've got it. Okay. <clears throat> and it's it's playing off of some of what you just said, but it's going into a different and hopefully interesting and bizarre place. Because <laughs> okay. now that we're talking this through, I'm kind of thinking about Octo- Octavia Butler. Ooh. And sort of the idea of her stories of moving through time and as I keep looking at this young man at the center of the story, I'm kind of like, well, what if I'm that young man? Okay. And you take T.T. Stern Enzi from 2019 and have me go back to Christmas morning breakfast in 1945. You're going to quantum leap into the painting? I am going to quantum leap into this painting. Yes. And it's an experience (laughs) that is obviously not my own, but maybe he is a descendant of mine, a recent descendant. And it's kind of like, okay, well, I've heard stories about this young man. Okay. And yeah, I'm in his, I'm in his life in this moment and trying to, I, again, you don't want to glorify that. Yeah. But trying to figure out, okay, what, it, what does this really mean to me? Again, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm looking at it now, but what would it mean if I, if I found myself in that scene? with all that around mm-hmm. would it would it inspire some sense of the holiday spirit in the season in me or would it make me even more cynical because i would be able to look at it and think well gosh yeah we don't have all of these things or whatever i would imagine that the season is supposed to give and would it make me angry would mm-hmm. it make me even more frustrated with my situation yeah i think that that would be a good perspective though because then you would be bringing 
the character of you, <laughs> the character of, of like a person who, who lives in a different time to this world. So it would not all be rosy necessarily. And you can maybe sidestep some of the, the risks of being overly sentimental about things. Right. Like, right. I, so I think that would be, that would be good. Yeah. There, there's something again, there's, a, there's a, a fascinating idea behind. And again, like I said, I do, I love Butler's work in that way because yeah, she plays with race and history mm -hmm. and, and what it all means. And again, that notion of being a contemporary black person going back into another period. And it's a story that we don't normally get, you know, what's the world going to be like outside of this one very flat scene. So what is the lesson? What is the lesson that future TT has to learn by quantum leaping into the story? And then what is the, the lesson he will learn of like, how does he get out of the situation? Right. Which that's always the, the curious part. And I don't know that I necessarily need to figure out how, how and why you get back. Because again, going back to Octavia Butler, she never necessarily felt the need to explain mm. those things. She would just move. You know, there could be stress or crisis or whatever, but something would happen and would sort of shock you back to the place where you were. Mm. And you might not immediately understand the lesson that you just learned from that setting and that scene. You might have to go back a couple of times. Okay. Who knows? Maybe the scene that we're laying out for this film right now is not even the first time that I've been back. Maybe I was there a week before. You know, so maybe, you kind of come back and forth. Yeah, you kind of mm, keep moving, and there again, these lessons that you're learning, and you're trying to figure out how, how, and what the time period is supposed That's to be nice. teaching you. That's nice. I like that. Like having running parallels between like two stories instead yeah. of just like you're there. I, I couldn't I couldn't get the rules of like quantum leap out of my head. <laughs> so the, the idea of like I've learned the meaning of Christmas. Why am I still here? And then realizing like there's something else. Like Oh, it's not Christmas it's that actually I'm here for. Not oh. the meaning of your, I, I actually that wasn't the problem I had to solve. <laughs> it was not just learning the meaning of Christmas. Maybe I need to learn the meaning of New Year's Eve. <laughs> and I've just got to be here longer. Oh, no, it's not that either. Okay, I've, I've been to New Year's Eve and I'm still here. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to learn the meaning of President's Day. All right. Oh, okay, great. I've learned now. Thank you. I'm ready to go home.